Hey folks, we're talking about location, place, and region today, unit one. Um, and you should take a second to pause the video and make sure that your notes look like these right here. Remember, you should have your key ideas that I've indicated in this outline um, highlighted. You need to have a title, date, and a page number on these notes. Today we're talking about three of the five themes of geography, location, place, and regions. So the first thing we're going to talk about is location. Location answers the question, where is it, right? So um, the location is the position that something occupies on the earth. And so there are four ways to determine location, and the first one is the toponym. Um, this is just the location's name. Uh, this is very straightforward, but it's important to know that toponyms are oftentimes reflective of the culture or the history of a particular location. So, it may indicate origin of settlers, it may indicate a specific founder, um, a dominant religion, or the physical environment in that area. And so some examples here is like uh, Washington, D.C., right? That is um, reflective of the first president of the United States of America. Um, George Washington University is also reflective of that, and it's found in Washington, D.C., um, Notre Dame is a um, Irish Catholic university, right? And so it is named to it is named to reflect that. Um, and then other examples um, are like the physical environment. Um, the Redwood National Forest is called that because there are redwoods in that forest. <laughs> and then another example is Arches National Park. You can see that the physical environment is actually made of a lot of large rock formations in arches. Another way to talk about location, or where is it, is the absolute location. This refers to where something is on a global grid. And this global grid is made up of latitude and longitude. So we use these latitude and longitude measurements to identify a location's position on the Earth. For example, this is what it looks like written out. Oak Hills High School is found at 39.14 degrees north and 84.64 degrees west. Um, and so let's talk about really quickly the difference between latitude and longitude. Um, latitude measures um, degrees north and south from the equator. So you can see the equator is found here, and so anything above it is a certain degree north, and anything below it is a certain degree south, right? Latitude is like a ladder. You can go up and down. Um, longitude starts at the prime meridian. So you can see the prime meridian is zero degrees, and it runs through Greenwich, England. And um, the uh, I'm sorry, longitude is measured in degrees east and west of the prime meridian. Um, and so it goes around instead of up and down. Uh, while we're talking about Greenwich, I also want to just briefly mention time zones. Time zones revolve around the prime meridian, and so you can see it right here. The Greenwich time zone is the base of all time zones. And then moving outwards, um, 15 degrees longitude each step, we have um, different time zones. So there are 24 total time zones. Okay, um, the next way to talk about location, is, where is it, is situation or relative location. So this is the location of a place in relation to other places, right? Um, it can help us identify a particular location by comparing it to familiar places. So for example, if you were trying to give someone directions to Great American Ballpark, they'd never been there before, but they had been to U.S. Bank Arena in the Ohio River, right? You could tell them that Great American Ballpark is right next to the U.S. Bank Arena on the banks of the Ohio River, right? Or if you were trying to meet someone, let's say, at Moorline Logger House after the Reds game, right? You would be able to say that it's on Joe Nuxall Way, um, and it's the closest restaurant to the river, right? So I am giving someone directions or describing a location based on things that are around it. Another example is Oak Hills High School can be found between Lawrence and Work Road, 
site just refers to the physical characteristic of a location. So it talks about things like climate, water sources, topography, soil, vegetation, elevation. Um, so an example is like New York City is located on a large deep water harbor next to the Atlantic Ocean. Right. Um, another example is Florida is a warm mid-latitude climate and it's surrounded by the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and then this, I, I just pulled this up really quickly. This is the elevation of some places in Cincinnati. So you could use elevation as a, a, a site characteristic. Okay, next we are talking about place. So, um, place answers the question, what is it like, right? It's what makes a, a location unique. So, um, it's very descriptive, and anything can be a place, okay? So, here are some things that you need to know about place. First of all, it, every place has every aspect of location. So, the four types of location that we just talked about are all applicable to place, um, next, places all have landscapes, and these landscapes are both cultural and physical. So I'll be able to talk to you about that a little bit later, but I just want you to keep it in mind. And also recognize that place changes over time. It does not always stay exactly the same. Okay, so some terms that you need to know when we're talking about place is sense of place. This is the attachments and the emotions that people have to a specific location. So these are features that contribute to this uniqueness or distinctiveness. And people define and describe places differently. So the sense of place um, is very unique to each individual. Um, and you don't necessarily have to have been to a location to have a strong sense of place regarding it. So an example is I could describe this beach very differently um, than you could uh, if I had been there before um, or not. Um, also, perception of place is important because when a person, this is when a person's beliefs about a place are developed from secondhand information. So maybe I read about Iceland um, in a book, right? Or maybe I watched a movie that was set in Iceland. Um, so I have developed some types of perceptions about what Iceland is like, even though I haven't been there. The only thing is that an outsider's perception is usually very different from the people who actually occupy that place. Next is sequent occupants. So this is the idea that places change over time as different societies leave their cultural imprints on them. So an example of sequent occupants is in New Orleans, right? So um, initially it was inhabited by Native Americans, but then it was colonized by the Europeans. And specifically, it was colonized by both the French and the Spanish, right? So we can see um, characteristics of both French and Spanish cultures in New Orleans. Um, think about the type of agriculture, or I'm sorry, the type of architecture, the building types that we see in New Orleans. Um, and we also see things like on signs here that indicate that... Um, there was a different culture living here at one point in time, and they've left their mark. Other examples could be like colonial buildings in Africa and Asia. Um, and then an example close to home here is the Serpent Mound in Ohio. So a group of Native Americans um, created this Serpent Mound um, as a part of their culture, right? And it is still left here on our landscape today. Okay, so let's talk about the difference between cultural and physical landscapes really quickly. So the landscape is basically just the attributes of a place, um, the overall appearance of an area, right? And so um, landscape can be cultural, which is also known as the built landscape, and it shows evidence of human activity, right? It's an example of human environmental interaction. So, for example, the Great Wall of China, which I have here, um, this is an example of the cultural landscape. Um, we can see that people have built this, um, and it shows their activity in some way. They're trying to keep someone out, right, um, or trying to keep people from leaving.
Um, but the physical landscape is just the natural environment, the physical environment around that built landscape. So we can see that this is a mountainous region, right? Another example here um, of the cultural landscape are highway systems, right? Um, but in the same picture, we see the physical landscape because we see a river running through this area. Okay, last thing to talk about is regions. So regions are spatial units that share similar characteristics. So think about it as this really broad sense of place. And geographers create regions to classify and understand spatial interactions, right? So um, there are three different types of regions, and the first one is formal. So let's talk about formal first. This is um, a region that has a common or uniform cultural or physical feature, right? Which is why I have these guys here all lined up in their uniforms. They're all wearing the same thing. Um, so examples of formal regions could be cultural or linguistic, political or environmental. So I'll give you some examples. A cultural um, region that is formal is sometimes a fuzzy border, but we see a common aspect of culture there. So for instance, the Bible Belt in the United States. The uniform characteristic is that most people are Baptist Christians. Uh, the Corn Belt, where most of the corn is grown in the United States. Or the Rust Belt, right? This is where heavy industry used to be located in the United States, but now is kind of rusting out and no longer in use. A linguistic region is obviously when we see everyone speaking the same language. Um, people may be different culturally, right, but they still have the same language. So right here is the country of Belgium, and you can see the different linguistic areas there. Another type of region is a political region. Uh, this is really easy to define because all political places have well-defined borders and they have an overarching government, right? So political regions could be like the United States, uh, Ohio, Europe. These are all examples of political regions. And then lastly is environmental regions. So these boundaries are transitional, but you can measure them. So just think about the environment changes over time. Um, but some examples of environmental regions are like the Sahara Desert or the Amazon Rainforest. So all three of these that I just discussed with you all fall un under the umbrella of formal regions, right? Um, but now let's talk about a different type of region. This is functional or nodal. This is an area organized around a node or a specific focal point. So I put this um, spider web here because the spider in the center is the node or the focal point. And so these functional and nodal regions are based off of transportation, communication, and the economy. So examples of these regions are like radio stations, television viewing areas, um, subway systems, outlet malls, highway systems, um, airplane routes, right? So these are all examples of regions that are focused around a specific activity that is either transportation, communication, or economic. Lastly is perceptional or vernacular regions. The boundaries of the region here are determined by people's beliefs. Uh, people believe it exists as a part of their cultural identity. So as a result, the boundaries are oftentimes unclear, right? And so I have this dreaming girl here because um, it depends on what you think in your head, right, to define this perceptional or vernacular region. An example is the American South. You can see here um, there are five different definitions just on this map of the American South, and there are different indicators to determine what makes a boundary of the American South. It's different for a lot of people um, who are living there or who are not. 
Another example, which you guys might understand, is um, the east side of Cincinnati or the west side of Cincinnati, right? Um, we've got this rivalry about um, what is east side, what is west side, and what does that mean? Um, but it's not really real, right? There's um, not a distinct difference, and there may not be a distinct border. So some people think that the border is I-75. Others people think that it's Vine Street. It's different for all people. 